So some of you may recognize the inclement weather procedure uh, presentation that has been done. Uh, we think it's very important now that we are coming upon inclement weather season that we let the public and all of our staff and our families know what the process is and everything that goes into making a decision as to whether we're going to delay or we're going to close the buildings for the day. You surprised us with a five o'clock call this morning. <laughs> we did. So this morning was our first inclement weather of the season. Um, and I will talk to you a little bit about the challenges that we have this year based on when we are in the buildings as opposed to what we see in normal years. So the purpose, we're going to talk about inclement weather. We have a number of different sources of weather information. We have subscriptions to AccuWeather. We look at the National Weather Service forecasts. We look at our local media outlets. We look at the Weather Channel. We contact MEMA. We look at Weather Underground website, and that begins the evening before. So Margaret Ellen and her transportation team are constantly monitoring weather, whether it be for snow or ice or even fog as we saw this morning. She provided me with a text last night about 8 o'clock that said we may be expecting fog, so be ready at 4 o'clock to start to discuss it. There are also different forecast models that we rely on. The North American Mesoscale, Global Forecast System, um, Rapid Update Cycle, these are some of the different um, models that you'll see used, especially during hurricane season, that help to predict what we're going to see in weather patterns. Can I assume that somebody puts all this together and has a recommendation and they take it to the superintendent and the superintendent says, press the button. That's correct. That's correct. So in the morning, our transportation team start very early, about 3 a.m., talking to the Maryland State Police. They deal with the Centerville Barracks, so we know that the information that they're getting is local to our area. We talk to the Sheriff's Office, to Emergency Management, and DES, so we know people that are on the street are actually seeing what's happening. Public Works, Department of Parks, uh, Maryland State Highway. We have spotters that are county bus drivers both uh, county and contracted drivers that do spotting for us in the morning. So if we anticipate, like we did this morning, that there's fog around 3 a.m., they're starting to ride their areas and see exactly what's happening in different parts of the county. We also have access to all of the state highway traffic cameras for 50 and 301, as well as the Bay Bridge, so we can see what's happening. And then we have our exterior cameras, so we look at our parking lots, we look at our sidewalks to see if they're starting to be clear, especially in a snow event, to make sure that we're ready for students. What does the message say? The message? Just a beep, beep, beep. Uh, it's, it's school, very simple. Schools will start later and so forth. That is the intent, yes. Um, we found this morning, and of course, with it being our first one of the season, that the television stations were not picking up our message quite as clearly as they had in the past. And that was partly because they were used to us doing a 90-minute delay. And today, that isn't what we proposed. So typically, yes, we try to keep the message very succinct, very easy to understand. And we're going to be looking at how to um, make that a little bit more accessible in the future as well. How is that used beyond weather? In terms of our messaging system, it's used for all different types of school events. So we utilize School Messenger first as one of the um, <coughs> our devices that will place telephone calls, it will send emails, and that's what we utilize for. It's also used by schools if they need to get information out about important deadlines or um, even sometimes that report cards are coming home just to alert parents. There are temperature and visibility readings that are done. Um, um, we have 14 different sites where these uh, readings are taken so we can tell if there's fog, if we have a one or two mile visibility. We also look at temperature so we can see if there are differences from South County to North County and vice versa. Here's a map of our weather spotters. Again, these are contracted employees as well as our county bus drivers that are out there looking at the situations in the area and giving 
the transportation department their feedback to make sure that we're seeing things in real time and they're getting real notes back to us about what the weather conditions in their area are. Here's our timeline for a delay or closing. This is what happens in a standard school year. And the reason that I'm sharing this is because potentially before we do this again next year, we could be back to a full day. That would be the hope, I think, of everyone. So at 3.30 a.m. is when the process begins. Transportation starts gathering all of the information we just mentioned. By 4.40 a.m., that decision has to be made as to whether or not we are going to delay or we're going to close school. At 5 a.m., the notifications start. So this goes out via school messenger. It goes out to our social media sites. Phone calls, emails start to be placed. At 6 a.m. on a normal day, we have students starting to board our buses. So that's why this process has to happen as quickly as it does. If we're still experiencing inclement weather at 7 a.m., then that decision needs to be made if schools are gonna close or if we're gonna remain on that delay that we've already called. On a 90-minute delay, that at 7.30 a.m., that is when students are gonna start boarding the buses. So 6 a.m. on a typical day, 7.30 a.m. when we have a 90-minute delay. And by 10 a.m., if, if we have students in the building and we opt to make an early dismissal to get all of the buses and to get everyone notified in the timely manner that they need to, we need to have that decision made by 10 a.m. Because at 11.30, 11.45, we have buses coming to take pre-K students home and bring afternoon pre-K students back. So it's quite a process that has to halt in the middle of the day if we do have inclement weather after we've gotten students So in the all building. the buses have to be decontaminated between pre-K and those that get on and so Yes. Okay. So we have now entered the age of hybrid learning. And our inclement weather policy is gonna look a little bit different during the time we have some students in the building and some students learning virtually. The process essentially starts at the same time. We're making decisions as we did this morning. Transportation is up and looking at this at 3.30 a.m. 4.40 a.m., again, that decision needs to be made. Right now, in hybrid learning, are we closing school altogether? As some of you mentioned during the last meeting, if there's a potential for hurricane force winds or if we're experiencing a blizzard and we don't believe we are going to have internet access or uh, ac access to power, that would be a day that we would look at doing a full closure of the buildings. We do have the virtual learning platform at this point, so we can, at this point, revert to virtual learning during some of our inclement weather days. If there's internet access. If there is internet access. Otherwise, we'll be using it as, as a snow day. Correct. Okay. And that would be a full closure. But you're gonna to get to if the kids are in the school and we have to get this mess early. So that yes, I will I will discuss that. So what we are doing right now with small group instruction. So we have small groups of students that are currently learning face to face within the buildings. The policy that we have implemented right now is only applicable to the students that are in school for small group instruction. Everyone else is continuing with their virtual learning as regularly scheduled. So in the event of inclement weather, as we had this morning, small group instruction goes virtual. Anybody that would have been coming to our building this morning would stay in a virtual capacity. The change that we have on a Wednesday is that we have 200 CTE students in different cohorts coming to Queen Anne's County High School to get some of their lab time and some of the face-to-face -face instruction that they need. So with a morning delay, a 90-minute delay, it leaves very little time for cohorts W1 and W2 to get any face-to-face -face learning. So in that event, we have them attend school virtually for the day. When it's necessary to delay, W1 and W2 stays home and they log in virtually. W3 and W4, our afternoon cohorts, then came to Queen Anne's County High School this afternoon once it was safe to move our buses around. All other students for the entire day attended virtually. In the event that we have inclement weather and we have to do an early dismissal, we only have students in the building right now for the morning half. So therefore, 
unless we started to see a rain or snow event or something that we had to dismiss very, very soon after they arrived, we would just be dismissing at 11.15 a.m. our one and two cohorts, and then cohorts three and four would attend virtually in the afternoon. So it's really the Wednesday program during small group instruction that is most greatly affected. So when the children are face to face on Monday and Tuesday, um, they're the same cohort is in the building all day. Or are we having children in in the morning and out uh, and then another cohort in and then out at the end of the day. The proposed schedules at 50% capacity only bring students back in for face-to-face -face learning in the morning hours, so 8 to 12 or 9 to 1. The afternoon will be uh, for virtual learning only. And that's every school? That's every school at this point. There is a potential with one of our elementary schools that we are looking at the possibility of a pilot program to see about doing some full day instruction. How is that possible with bus schedules instead of letting everyone have two full days of school? From my understanding, the difficulty with having the full days of school revolves around number one, transportation, and number two, staffing schedules. So if you have staff in front of students in the morning, then they have to allot some time in the afternoon to be with our virtual students. So it doesn't work at every building that they have the staff at this point that they're able to allocate. With one of our elementary schools, we have had some discussions because they feel that they have additional staff that would be available to do all of their virtual students, and therefore they could allot some of their teachers to full-time learning. So these things aren't in stone yet because the biggest cry we're hearing from teachers is they can't get home in time to get their own children. So if it was a full day of school, that problem may be alleviated Okay, well, we're, we're getting off course on what we're t talking about right now. Yes. But if a schedule changes, this is all going to change. Mm -hmm. That's sure. correct. This will change, and I'll get into that in just a second. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, on a, normal, on a normal schedule, we have some additional bus routes that have to be considered. So we have our uh, RISE Academy out back. We have students that are coming to... Uh, Centerville for the CTE classes. We have the fire school that houses both Ken Island High School and Queen Anne's County High School students. We have special needs buses that go out of county to Baltimore and some places greater. Uh, the annex <coughs> from Ken Island High School goes to, or, um, the Ken Island High School annex at Mattapique Middle School has to go to the main campus for different classes. In a normal year, we would see athletic events, we would see field trips, we would see late buses. Right now, we are not dealing with those at some point we may be. Again, notice of the decision, school messenger, we post everything on our website, on our Facebook page, QAC TV runs all of our decisions for delay or closings. We have several television stations that we provide the information to, as well as several radio stations. And code blue and code red are codes for the employees. Code blue, it's up to you. Code red, stay in bed. This is how we think we will be able to utilize some special instruction to our staff, whether we are doing a full closure day, code red, or whether we are doing the code blue, up to you, and who is able to make it into the buildings on what would have been a typical delay. So a teacher would say it's up to me, so my driveway is filled, I can't leave, but our students show up and there's no teacher. And if you'll allow me, I'll get to that in just a second because yeah. we do have a lot of we do have a lot of questions that are going to come up with our 50 well, percent capacity. Are already being answered, so I'm not worried. <laughs> so a lot of times we get questions: Why do we not open in this county in zones? We have 372, close to 372 square miles of land from the Chesapeake Bay that goes all the way to the Delaware line. 
We transport upwards of 7,800 students in a regular year on 80 plus buses, and we do 11,000, over 11,000 miles. We have a two-tier bus system. So some of our buses that are used on tier one are also utilized on tier two, and it makes it very difficult then to intermingle and or change because those buses are utilized for two different runs, not just one. We have the CTE classes and different shuttles that we're running to both our Arise Academy and to the CTE classes. And if we were to look at opening in zones, it has been studied many times. It has been ruled out. We definitely need to purchase additional buses. We need many more drivers to be able to accomplish something like that. Other factors are that we have many high school students that drive every day. We want to make sure that we're making the best decisions about inclement weather to keep them safe. We look at Queen Anne's County Public Works, Centerville Public Works, and State Highway and how quickly they're able to remove snow, keep our roads clear. We look at Queen Anne's County Public School parking lots and how quick our partners that help us to remove snow from there are able to get out. And we look at home and business owners and how fast they're able to shovel snow. In a large event, they may not be getting out to clear our sidewalks and therefore we are not allowing our students to safely travel, especially those by foot. There is a school delay and closing committee formerly the Transportation Advisory Committee. They used to meet in May. We're not able to do that this year because of COVID. They will be meeting now as necessary. And the things that they've looked at previously is the one hour delay, a 90 minute delay, doing a two hour delay, um, and they, they weigh the benefits of each. They look at um, how many closings and delays that we have every year. You will see the list here. Last year, before we left in March, we actually had zero closings and only four delays. And this group is made up of a number of different community members as well as students and staff. So here's where it gets a little bit trickier than if we were operating in a normal year. The delay process for us at 90 minutes is a challenge because we are only planning to have students in the building at this particular time for half day increments. So by the time we get them in 90 minutes late, they're really only there for a short amount of time. Our plan will be that for inclement weather days, we would eliminate during COVID and during our 50% capacity that delay schedule. Instead, we would resort to virtual learning for that day. That is going to be, as you have all mentioned, dependent on our final school schedules, and those are not 100% complete yet. As they are, we are going to clearly communicate what the plan will be for 50% return to the buildings in terms of inclement weather. This will go to students, to staff, to parents. We anticipate that as we mentioned, there will be an option for all closed. That will be our red day. And those are the days that we don't believe that we will adequately be able to get everyone online to be able to do learning. The other option is our virtual learning day. Students and teachers would maintain their regular schedule online. And then we have to look at our support staff. The code blue, it's up to you what support staff will need to be able to be at the buildings and not work remotely that day. So those are some of the things that we're still um, with the schedule and as soon as it is determined what will be finalizing. So we just want everyone to know that there is um, a lot of information and a lot of data collection that goes into a decision every day as to whether we are going to delay, whether we are going to close, whether we are going to virtual learning. And we're always thinking about the safety, utmost safety of both students, staff, and their families. Okay, any other questions? So I mean, we have a lot of information coming to you as far as checkers, temperature range, and weather. And others. So it all, it, all these people report to chief operating officer? No. No. Okay. No, they report to our transportation department. So Margaret Ellen and her team at the warehouse are the ones that are collecting this. Okay. With their expertise and their decisions and all of the information, then their next call is to me. We discuss the information, and then the final call would go to the superintendent, and she would make that decision when available. <clears throat> and she made that decision today? No. This morning, no. Who made it? You did? Yes. 
Anybody else? The decision is made, and somebody is there somebody that can say, well, no, I changed my mind? No. Once we start the process of rolling out this information. So therefore, no one can stop the wheel when it starts. Correct. Correct. We start to notify many families. There are a couple different tiers of notifications that start to go out in School Messenger, but there are a multitude of families that will be getting that first round of calls, and at that point, it is too late to stop. It, and maybe this is for a later discussion today, but if we have two groups, uh, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and two separate groups, and so we have buses going back and forth to get them uh, into the classroom. What would be the worst possible time for uh, a closure of school? It would be probably right at, right at uh, the lunch break. Yes, midday would be the hardest because you're trying to get morning students home and also trying to stop the process of starting your afternoon what? students. What are the chances of losing a child? The child goes this way, gets on the wrong bus. There's a lot of confusion. It's the first time we do this. Uh, you mean in terms of because the child gets a fifty percent capacity and, and the return and, but and the difference there? Because they're leaving early and there's everybody trying to get on a bus at the same time. I, you know, I don't know. It's been a long time since I got on a bus. Right. Our bus routes don't change, and neither do the drivers. So therefore, the safety protocols that we have in place are in place even during any type of inclement weather. You hear that? Absolutely. Really, uh, in all these years I've been on, there's only been a couple of times that. This process kind of didn't work because basically it's because of the weather. All of a sudden it cleared up. We got a million emails yes. as to why were you closed, why are you closed, like no, weather. I'll give you one better. So, the one snow event that happened all of a sudden, kids yeah. were in school, they were at lunch, right. and we had close to two inches fall very quickly. From the time you can even mobilize I buses. By the time we even mobilize. I remember the that. building, it was really hard. Yes. 2013, all of a sudden it just started snowing. Yes. And then we're 14. You know, but you have a good, they have a real good system, Mark. And, yes. And to communicate what happened, they, you know, they have a system for that. We had a tornado warning. So they were all in the building inside the, you know, hunkered down. Did and say and everything came, started late. Make, so we had to notify all the parents that. <clears throat> They were, yes. kids were coming late. It was and there are times that that has happened with large rain events that we have had to delay buses. That even happens with traffic. So oh, if there's, there's the something that happens, yeah. yes, yeah. if the bridge closes, there are times that our buses are delayed and school messenger is utilized. I got to give them that credit, though. They do a fabulous job with all these circumstances. Thank you. Our transportation really department puts yeah. a lot of work in this and a lot of early mornings. I can't remember. Do you pay the um, observers? There is a small know? stipend. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Good. All right. Thank you so much.